Hello, all my model car building buddies. This is Model Cars with Glenn. And I got my Glenn license renewed this morning, so I'm good for another week. All righty. Let me tell you, I'm going to move these. And you can see, I got my brother's picture up there. It's nice. I like his stuff. I got to put my whirly jigger down there. Isn't that nice? That is a uh, surreal space of another planet shot. Okay, picture. Anyway, it's pretty, and that's what counts in art. I don't know art, but I know what I like, and I like that. All right, this is my whirly jigger. See, that's whirling. Uh, let me see where I'm at. Oh, Corvair. I've been working on the front suspension. My pointer out here. See that? I got... I got the uh, doohickeys up here and the shackles back here. These are just brackets. These are shackles. Remember I had the tubing glued across the things there, the springs, and then I, after it dried good, I cut them off on each end on either side and took sanding paper and smoothed them out to where they was even with the same width as the spring. All right, and then I got, where's it at? This thing. I took, cut a strip of plastic and glued it together, glued, cut it in half and glued the two halves together, trim the ends down. And I made these marks in four places and I drilled a hole in this end and in this end. These will be the front shackles that you just saw a minute ago, the front brackets. And then this one got the two holes in it. This is the one shackle. Can't drill this one yet because I had to cut all this apart put this piece on top of this piece and drill through this and through this. That way the holes will all be the same distance apart. And then once I get them all, I cut it, I cut one off and just rub it on my spongy sandpaper I told you about before. See that? Rounding the edges off. They don't have to be round. They just have to have the sharp corner took off of it. Coming in, let me see. Yeah, that's coming in all right. It would be if I move this, I bet you. Yeah, there you go. See that? And then this one will sit on top of this and use this as a guide to drill those holes. See? And then I used a thin rod. You can use plastic rod if you got it. I used a long steering uh, shaft from the steering wheel to the bracket pinion on one of the pro stock cars because it's just the right size. And I got it put through through the brackets and through the spring thing. And then on this end, through the shackle. And down here, I had this cut this little piece of tubing the same width as the frame. And then, and then uh, put these together with the rod through there and then set it down on some glue to where it will stay there. And then after it's all good and dry, I'll take a sanding block and go across and level out all these pins so they're all the same length. But I want to leave them sticking out a little bit because they'll look like bolts, you know, holding it all together. How about that? That ain't bad looking, though. That's going to be cool. It'll be all right. Springs. The frame has a warp to it. Normally, you could tell if you got them right by pushing down on one of the back corners. But nope, the frame's got a warp to it, but... I think the warp will go out of it when I glue it down to the chassis there or the interior pan. And one other thing is to get these the same height, you just got to sight through. You can see you can see through between the frame and this tubing here and just get them both the same. You know, squeeze it, push it up, pull it down, whatever. And then after it's dry, you can you can trim off the excess sand it smooth with the top of the frame and then you got your springs now whew, that's a bit much for one thing right there so next i gotta make an axle i'll show you how i make an axle and if i got time on the same video i'll show you how to make the u-bolts and hold it on there with might be in two installments might not i don't know we'll see what happens but that that don't look bad to me you set the body on it Line up the chassis. Ta-da, springs. See that? I'll be all right. Next. Not a whole lot of next year because 
I have had, I have not been feeling well today. Glenn's been sick. But I did manage to cut the front end off. This plastic is so old. You ever try to cut the clear blind, the clear window plastic? It's a different plastic from the body. It's not soft at all. It's like, it's like I don't know what, but it's like real glass. And this body is so old, it's now like real glass. It took me like three hours of gently scraping with the, with the, let me see if I got it right here. Yeah. I got this guy at the hardware store. It's for cutting plastic. It's for cutting the clear lucite. You know, you can scratch it like that. It works pretty good. I got these cut and I took razor saw and went up through here and up through here. And then I had to cut very carefully across there. But it all come off pretty good. I got the top all glued down right all the way around. And I got to start doing a lot of sanding. But there, lark. That's the lark. I not done anything to the boat tail or the flat top. This is going to be a... Excuse me, I'm drinking root beer still. Um, this is going to be a shorter video because I haven't felt good all day. I don't feel good now. Um, I'll be all right. I just don't feel good. Anyway, I'm going to show you a couple of these guys. It might be better with paper under it. Yeah, maybe, I guess. Let me turn on the light. Blam. Yeah, that helps out a lot. This is 37 Chevy. I think it's out now as a salt shaker in this form without the fenders on it. I built this about two or three years ago before that kit ever came out. But... I wanted to I wanted to make it fenderless. I like fenderless. It, it looks more like a good stripped down hot rod. This is one that ran back in the early sixties, I guess. You can tell by the tires. You know, they're really thin slicks. They had to have the front jacked up in order to throw the weight like that back on the back tires so they quit spinning. This motor come out of that fifty Ford pickup. It's a flathead motor, but it has these Arden heads on it. Arden, A-R-D-U-N, heads on it that go on a flathead, flathead block. But, damn, one of these days I'm going to get a bunch of drive shafts together. I'm going to go around and drive shaft every one of these damn things. Anyway, this is, uh, what is it now, a 36, 37 Chevy? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. And it got the blower on it, the spark plug wires, and three, I guess that's three two barrels on there. That'd be cool, a little six-pack. Uh, I don't remember how I made this scoop. I made it out of something. I don't know. It does not It does not ring a bell. There's the, you can't see the interior, I bet. Well, maybe you can. This is... There it is. Yeah, got tuck and roll on the dash, and on the seats, door panels. Oh, it's got a little fogging around the windows because I just gave it a bath. You know the hardest thing about giving a model a bath is holding it down. They do not like getting white water. Just like washing a dog, you got to hold it down. I made these little aprons to go in here to cover it up at the zoomies. Okay, well, this is my, that's my 37 Chevy. And uh, I don't remember who, somebody uh, said, why don't I take the flat top and cut off the front and then in front of the windshield and leave that part off the hood and the fenders and make a, make it like that. Ah, I already did it. This is my vet, four engine vet. It's kind of like one of them Tommy Ivo cars. No, I, I like multi-engine cars. I don't like these motors. I don't like them at all. I put it. I like I said, make it exist, and then go back and redo it later when you figure out how. But I got to get the blocks are okay. I want to get eight good valve covers that look good. These didn't look good. They got I stripped the chrome off of everything, and I don't like the intakes. And if I had four sets of stacks, I'd put those on it, and that'd be cool short stacks but i bought that mickey thompson uh challenger land speed record car had the four engines in it that 
I've always bragged that I could build any model as long as it had instructions and sometimes if it didn't. But I was proven wrong when I tried to build that. That thing, whoo, that was a bear. And I ended up gutting the inside and just gluing the wheels in place and making it a static shelf mount model. It looks good just sitting there. You can't tell it. There's no motors in it. But I got the motors out of that. And they had, I got four blowers and four blower drives enclosed. I'm going to put those on it when I get some scoops for them. Because the scoops that came with it weren't nice. They, they weren't very cool. But it's a cool vet, man. Let me lower this down a little bit so you can get the mean look of it. There it is. How about that? It's a chassis. Is from a double dragster kit. You probably recognize the roll bars. And the frame. I had to stretch, use two of those uh, double extra wide frames under there. And two motors drive the front wheels and two motors drive the back wheels. It's hooked up. This is this is a nice kit. The these vents over the tires here to let the, the smoke out came from the front fenders. They were down here. I cut them out and cut a hole in the top of the vet there and put them up there because that looks cool. Doesn't that look cool up there? It's a good paint job too. I like this paint job. My airbrush was working really good that day. Which anybody's got an airbrush, you know, they don't always cooperate with you. Oh, I don't feel good at all. I have depression attacks. Like, if you can believe that, by the way I act, but I do. It ain't hitting me right now. It, it, it hit me all day. I was just sitting here going, ah. Oh, I forgot. I got to do shop card shout outs. Here we go. This is something. This is Poppy's RC and Models. I love this channel, man. Poppy is a very cool dude, man. I really like him, and I like his channel. I've, wa I've been watching him. I've been going back and catching some of his earlier stuff and just watched one today. Very good stuff. If you, if you, if you haven't already uh, subbed to him, get your lazy butt over there and give him a sub. What's wrong with you, man? You can't be that bad off. You think, boink, boink, like that, and, and, uh, Sub, give him a like, and maybe comment. Watch a couple of his of his shows and comment. Poppy is a cool dude, man. You'll like him. Next, Big Charlie. I like Big Charlie too. <laughs> he is a cool dude, man. You'll you'll see that when you watch when you go over and watch a couple of his episodes if you haven't yet. A lot of people already watched him and they love him, but you need to get your butt over there and sub him. Because you need to see everything he's done. And I thank you for this card, Big Charlie. Oh, yeah, thank you for the card, Poppy, too. And uh, look at this, man. That's nice. That's nice. That's nice. And that's real cool right there. I like the semi. I don't have... I only got the one semi, but I'm planning on getting some more semis. I like semis. I usually make them into records because I really like records. But this here is Big Charlie's Model Garage. Get your lazy butt over there and give him a sub and a like. And if you don't, there's something wrong with you. You just don't like cool shows and models. Next. 60s Rules. This is Dan over at 60s Rule. And you can't beat this card, man. Check out the check out the cool old kits. It's got he's got he put some of his old kits up to 50 cents. I remember these. I built these kits as a kid. I ain't lying. I did. I used to get a dollar a week for my allowance, and I'd spend every damn penny of it on models. And if I could buy two models, that was even better. And over here, 60 cents for these old-timey ones, and they come in a plastic bubble. And down here, we got some old monogram kits. I had that one. I think I still do. I can't, my eyes aren't that good, but it looks like one of the bubble top ones, and I got some bubble tops. Anyway, this is 60s rule. It's Dan. I want a van like this. Where the hell did he get this van? I want one of those. If I knew where to get it. <coughs> Excuse me. Anyway, this is 60s rule. 
Go get, like I said before, get your lazy butt off the chair. Go give him a sub and a like. Check out my Jack, my uh, vet. And I gotta go. You give me a sub and a like, too, and a comment, man. Come on, what's going on? All right, I, I, I'm gonna duck out of here now because I think Grammy's still looking for me. I will catch y'all later.